Hello again everyone, uh, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today and tuning in to this live broadcast. Um, we're doing an oil painting today, which you should know about uh, by now, and uh, hopefully you like it. Um, let me tell you a few things about the painting and the painting surface. Um, our uh, challenge today is going to be uh, really how to simplify your photographs, how to uh, take stuff out and still get a meaningful painting. Um, if you've been looking at the photo I've had displayed here for the last 15 minutes, it's very busy, very complicated, um, and uh, I want to talk about how to take stuff out of it and try to get a good painting out of it. Um, today we're painting on uh, 11 by 14 uh, linen covered hardboard, so it's not a canvas. It's hard and it doesn't move like the canvas does, so that'll be a little bit something different today. Um, see, I have my sketch already on here. Um, it's uh, typically the way I do it is uh, I, I put a uh, white transfer paper on here and uh, take my sketch from uh, my uh, tracing paper and uh, I work the sketch out and then I transfer it here and it turns out white. I have gray gesso on here as usual. Um, that's typically how I uh, do my oil, oil painting. So um, that uh, said, I want to go over to my computer and show you how I arrived at this particular composition and show you how it slightly differs from the photograph you've been looking at for the last uh, few minutes. And uh, then we'll get going. So uh, let me step over to the computer and I'll switch on to that uh, system and talk to you in a minute. <clears throat> Hello again. Here I am. Uh, Okay, so today I want to talk to you about the uh, how to simplify your photographs a little bit. Um, this uh, photo that I started with, as you can see here, this is the original photo that I had. It's one I purchased from an artist, and uh, again, if you look at it, it has about one-third of this photograph is in sky, about one-third of it is in uh, the trees and sort of the middle ground. Uh, one third about is in uh, foreground and uh, so I try to keep from doing a painting that's a third a third a third I think the last month we talked about that a little bit um, I try to change it around I either zoom in on it and uh, try to either minimize the foreground or minimize the sky or both and so that's what I did already with this photo and so you can see here now um, what happened when I zoomed in and cropped it I got a lot less sky. It's probably 10 to 20 percent sky. I got the, the trees and the middle ground is probably 60 to 70 percent and the foreground is even smaller. Um, so it's probably maybe 20 percent. So um, with that uh, being said, um, I want to show you now how I took this crazy photograph and made a, a painting out of it because um, it's a, there's a lot of uh, stuff in here. There's a lot of dead trees and I think this is maybe a fall scene and uh, I want to turn it into a springtime scene and uh, so that's what we're going to do. Um, somebody's type something here, put this video up on YouTube later. I'm heading out. Okay, yes, mine, Jim, I will. Uh, these will all be on YouTube later. Um, you can watch the live streaming version but I typically edit this and uh, put a new version up in about two days that has maybe some of the glitches out of it that may have come across in the live broadcast. Okay, back to my cropped photo here. This is what I started with. <clears throat> okay, so then I uh, put my grid over it, my 4x5 grid. Again, we're painting on 11 by 14 canvas, so my uh, grid that's 4x5 uh, makes a nice transfer for that particular size painting. And also I did my usual thing. I won't take you through it again today, but um, I will uh, show you my value map and you notice I changed a few things in here. It looks like I have maybe something like a, a stream or a pathway or something going back in it. Uh, this photograph had really no depth at all. Um, it, it was just uh, a photograph of a big glob of trees and uh, they were not very uh, distinct. They're sort of all run together and uh, so uh, I used this as my guiding value map and then um, I, I did the uh, sketch. So if you can see the sketch now, when you see that, um, you will notice that I sort of taken out a lot of the tree brush and all the branches 
and just sort of tried to get to the trees that were behind everything. And uh, I'm going to use that as my guiding sketch now. So if you've spent time sketching what you've seen here, you may <laughs> want to change it a little bit. Uh, basically, all that stuff in the middle, I'm, I'm allowing myself to put in a, a, uh, a pathway so your eye can go back into the painting. You always want to make a good composition, particularly landscapes, to, you can move the eye into the painting, get people from the front foreground, into the middle ground, to the background, and make it sort of interesting and maybe mysterious back there. So we're going to try to do that today and turn this into more of a... Um, a spring painting instead of a uh, fall scene. So I think that's all I wanted to tell you about that. So uh, let me go back to my easel now and we will get started. And uh, the first thing I will do here, of course, is take you through my paints and brushes. Um, they're the same about every week, every time I do a painting. Um, I use the Bob Ross paints that I have uh, quite an inventory of since I taught these classes for quite a few years. I still have a lot of paints. Um, and let me go through them. There's titanium white, uh, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red. Those are all Bob Ross paints. And then I have um, this uh, ultramarine violet here that comes from Grumbacher. Um, I like to use it sometimes with some of my uh, shadows and uh, to darken down some things as well. Uh, the brush sets that I'm using are the same I've had before. I have a, a few, three Bob Ross uh, elements here and the rest of them are treckle brushes. Uh, I have this uh, one inch landscape brush from Bob Ross and I have four uh, treckle uh, filbert brushes, six, a 1610, 6 and 2. I have about three flats, uh, a number 12, a number 4, and a 0. Then I have a little round here that I use for some small fine details. I also still keep uh, in my inventory here a, a fan brush from Bob Ross, a number 3 fan brush. I keep the script liner that Bob Ross sells. Um, I also keep the uh, painting knife that uh, uh, is a Bob Ross paint, painting knife. Uh, I may not use any of those or all of those, but uh, uh, certainly I'll have them. I also have a little a brush here that I use for sometimes for architectural details. It's, a, it's actually a watercolor brush. It's a golden Taclon uh, brush that actually can get a very sharp edge on it if I want some sharp uh, details for, um, for my landscape, if I have uh, either buildings or something architectural in it. So let's go back to the uh, painting now. And uh, you see I have my original photo. This is my cropped photo that I showed you a minute ago on the computer. And I also have my value sketch up there to kind of keep my values uh, in, in check. Um, so let me zoom in here with my uh, camera controller and see if I can get this lined up so you can watch me paint it. Okay, here we go. I think that should be coming across just about right. I don't want to get, I don't want to zoom out too far, but I don't want you to miss anything either. So all right, we're going to start at the top here and uh, work our way down. Again, we're painting on, on hardboard. This is not uh, this is not canvas, so it has a little bit different um, feel to it when you paint on it because it doesn't give underneath the brush. It sort of uh, stands up to the brush. So uh, we want to make sure that we uh, take that into account. And I also want to remind you that uh, if you have any uh, questions. While we're live streaming here, you can actually uh, type them into the chat window there and you can see the other chat that's going on. And uh, if you type them in, I will check my, I have a computer up here by my easel and I will uh, check it periodically to see if, uh, if um, there are any questions I might be able to answer. So, all right, so we're gonna get going on this painting now and I'm gonna start in the background. I also have in my painting inventory here, I have a, a little plate that has some liquid white on it. That's a Bob Ross color. And I also have some uh, Windsor Newton Liquin, which is a medium that helps paints dry faster. Uh, the liquid white that Bob Ross sells tends to make the uh, paints dry slower. Um, and uh, so um, I'm going to put a little bit of that in the background here and just sort of, 
identify where I want my sky to go and uh, I'm going to come back and put some some color in there in a minute and uh, but right now I want to get something on that kind of flows across the the painting surface here um, just just a little bit of this uh, white here uh, I don't want to take out my sketch um, that's one of the reasons why I modify the uh, Bob Ross technique I, I, I kind of I learned a lot from him uh, watching his, his videos for a long time but uh, it's sort of I guess I've maybe graduated beyond that a little bit uh, because I like to have a sketch uh, when you put liquid white over the whole canvas uh, you really eliminate any ability to do a sketch and uh, see what you've done so I try to preserve that um, for me and uh, so I'm going to uh, work on just sort of a, a gray, gray sky here, maybe with a little blue in it. I get some uh, stalo blue is such a potent color that it just eats up uh, any colors you put on your, your canvas. But I'm going to put a little sky in here and uh, see if I can get it to So I'm going right over this. Uh, liquid white and liquid that's on the uh, on the board here and uh, kind of making a, a light light tone this will probably be my lightest uh, tone in the painting um, and it's not going to be a lot of sky that I want you to draw attention to I want you to look at other things in this uh, painting so I don't want the sky to be overly uh, defined or don't want it to have a lot of stuff in it that makes you look up there basically it's just some of this is going to be background I'm going to have some uh, holes here that you can see through the the, uh, the sky and see some of the I want to bring this sky down just a little bit here I realized in this area right in here sort of comes down fits in between these trees right in here. So I'm using just white and midnight black to give myself a little bit of a gray in here that uh, uh, is going to fit in between these. I put a little bit of that blue in it. I'm going to put a touch of alizarin in there to sort of make it a little more violet, I guess. Maybe even pick up a little violet. Uh, that may be too much, but uh, I want this background to sort of recede in the, the trees. I want this background to have some uh, interesting color in it that makes it look like it goes way back there. Okay, I hope you can see that okay. Um, it's very light. It's going to be the lightest part of my painting here. And uh, so a lot of artists talk about different ways to start painting. You don't always have to start with the background and come forward like I do. Uh, you can start about anywhere you want, really. Uh, every artist sort of has their own preference for where they like to start. Um, I just find it kind of hard to put a sky in behind trees after I've already put trees in. Um, it seems kind of counterintuitive uh, to me, I guess. Um, but. Um, I like to uh, sort of paint back to front, top to bottom. That's sort of my style when I paint in oils. That's even my style when I paint in watercolors. Um, so, all right, now we're going to start working on some of these trees that are in the background. I'm going to give them a um, sort of a hazy, hazy look. It has to be uh, darker than what's behind it. Um, put some blues and uh, a little bit of my uh, uh, violet in here and see if I can get a color that stands out above these trees back here. Okay, still using this big brush um, that I had um, for the sky. So I'm just going to put these in. They have the blue or the, the this uh, lavender color that I've got here and the sort of the blue color will make those recede and uh, look like they're in the distance. Um, it's really atmospheric perspective is what we're demonstrating here. Um, 
You don't want to make them too dark. If you make them too dark, they start coming forward and they come forward too quickly. Um, you start confusing your viewer as to what you're doing back here. Um, you want them to uh, gradually get darker as they come forward. Um, and I'm just picking up some colors here, trying to change them. There's just a ton of ton of trees back in here. Um, and they are sort of bright and, and sunny. Um, even though I don't have a real blue sky here, I'm going to have these trees sort of in the distance. And then as we come forward, we'll start adding some, some green to them. Uh, and uh, go back and put a few more things in here. I'm just kind of pushing up this brush. I'm not uh, uh, putting big globs of paint on. I'm just sort of covering the surface slightly. Uh, and I'm going to have another big tree that sticks out over this over here, so I'm not too concerned about it. I want I just want to see that behind there, but I don't want it to be obvious, too obvious. So I'm just sort of coming down now. Um, put a few other tones in here, maybe some uh, gray that I can pick up with my uh, colors here. Um, I didn't really make much gray there, did it? Um, so I'm just sort of lining in a background area here that just sort of looks like it's further away than the photograph. The photograph really had it uh, you're right up there in it, um, and it uh, <laughs> was right in your face, and then it was all these dead branches and dead stuff that uh, it wasn't really dead, I guess it was, it was uh, since it was a fall scene, I think it was uh, where the leaves had already dropped off. So we're changing it from fall to spring, and uh, I'll be putting in some nice spring colors over the top of this in a minute. But I want to get a little bit of an underpainting under most of this, um, so we have uh, something to work on top of. I don't know where this photograph came from. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I purchased this from an artist. These a number of photographs, over 700 photographs I purchased with the right to uh, repaint them without any copyright issues and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, so I take them and try to really do something to modify them uh, so they don't look exactly the way they were when I purchased them. Uh, so if you've followed me for oil painting for a few weeks or a few months here, you've probably seen a little bit of that. Um, so uh, these are my trees in the background and I'm just sort of filling this in with this background color of uh, a little bit of violet and whatever. Um, I got trees here I'm sort of painting around. Maybe you can see that. I don't know if you can tell I'm leaving room. Uh, in watercolor painting we call that uh, painting negative space where you paint behind and around something. Uh, I guess people might decide it's easier to paint the positive shapes in first and then paint the background in later. I don't know. Um, but I uh, kind of like to see that. I like to see where the trees are going to go. and uh, So basically that's uh, kind of all I wanted to do there. Um, bring it down. I think I'm going to make this area here that looks like it might be a path. I think I'm going to make that little stream of water that sort of flows here. So I'll give myself a nice little Z pattern in this painting to uh, take your eye from the foreground and move you back into this background area here. So uh, some of this area down here will probably be a little foggy and misty maybe, I don't know. Uh, we'll just put some of that color down there and just kind of hook it together and we can always paint over that for sure. Okay, that looks kind of weird uh, when I look on the camera and see it. Um, but uh, that's the uh, first underlying layer here. 
I'm all right. So here we've got um, back, more background trees. I'm going to start pulling in a little bit of my uh, some browns here and some reds, uh, maybe even a little yellow to get some orange colors going, brighter colors. Let's see what this looks like in here. Okay, there's a little bit of a color there we got going. Um, picked up some alizarin, some of my um, dark sienna, and even a little bit of my cad yellow. Uh, so I'm just uh, throwing a little bit to cover some canvas here. Um, So this is going to make a nice backdrop for whatever I put over it. It's going to uh, sort of lighten it up. It's going to look like it's coming closer because it's warmer. Um, and we want it to be a little warmer as we come forward since this is a more of a spring scene than it is a uh, fall or winter scene. So just putting in these, these brighter colors here help warm it up, move it forward. Um, I'm coming from a cooler, cooler in the distance as we move forward. We're getting a little warmer, uh, but I'm still basically in this middle ground area here that uh, I don't want to be too, too distinct with, too uh, obvious. A little more of this, put some ochres in there, pick up a few of these. I'm not washing my brush out very much. I did wash it out a minute ago, but uh, I'm going to put in some of these other colors here. We'll start pulling in a few things that look more summer or spring-like. So I'm also trying to change the color so that I don't have I don't have just a band of blue and a band of uh, violet and a band of yellow or whatever. I'm trying to variegate these colors um, so that they change as you go across the painting. When I push some of this yellow up into that blue, I'm starting to get some uh, green out of it because it's mixing with what's there. And uh, I think this up on the upper right side is going to have a little more reddish in it, so I'm going to put a little red in there maybe. All right, so when you see this, what do you see? You see, hopefully, if you can ignore this, that they're not trees, but these are abstract shapes. If I follow this and trace this around, I've got interesting little abstract shapes here going on. So that that's something that's very important to painters uh, to make good compositions. Most artists uh, give workshops may not talk much about these abstract shapes, but they may be painting them and not telling you why or why that's important, but it's it's what makes paintings interesting. If I just squared these off, and sometimes nature shows you nice squared off perfect duplicates of trees that just clone each other, um, that may be the way they are in nature, but that's not the way an artist should depict them. Um, if you want a nice, pleasing composition. And the reason for that is that that you, uh, you're you trying to take something that's maybe, who knows, uh, you know, half a mile wide or very, very wide, and you're trying to put it on canvas that's only 11 by 14. So you have to make these shapes interesting. You have to make this uh, very uh, appealing for people to look at and uh, one way to do that is with abstract shapes. So try to think in terms of abstract shapes as you paint these things. Okay, I'm pulling up some sap green now that I'm going to start mixing in with uh, the yellow that's here. Uh, 
I'll lighten this up even more. It's a lot that what was in the original photograph was all sort of gray and not very uh, pleasant looking here. Uh, but I'm just sort of putting in some some fresh green here. Um, take some uh, sap green, a little bit of my uh, yellow ochre, and I start getting a different color. And uh, so I'll put some of that over here. Um, so we're starting to move and change. So this looks like it's really looking like a very dense wood, uh, but it's going to have some depth because I have added the the cooler colors in the distance and lighting them, lightening them up as we come forward. And that is the illusion that artists try to achieve to give yourself depth in a painting. And then when I add this little stream here uh, to zigzag your eye back into the painting, you're going to see that uh, that is something else that adds depth to the painting. So just let me put these things in here real quickly. Different colors of green. I may add just a touch of that blue. Very much blue just destroys uh, your colors on the painting. And so see how much darker that touch of phthalo blue in with that sap green just really darkened it up over there. That's okay. Um, so far I've only worked with this one brush, this big old 16 filbert. Uh, and uh, I'm using different brush strokes. Pretty much the brush stroke I'm using is just sort of a pushing up, letting the paint come off and uh, leaving these impressionistic looking shapes on the uh, canvas. This, uh, this board is it's covered with Belgium, 100% Belgian linen. So it's uh, an interesting uh, surface to paint on. And with my gesso on there, I have some, I've, I've actually added some uh, texture that wasn't on the surface before I started. Um, like that much white. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit, but uh, so I'll just put some lighter areas here that uh, kind of draw the eye back there. Okay, I got enough of that background. I think I'm going to start maybe putting in a few of these trees now uh, to start trying to tie it together. And uh, I think I'm going to use to get something that's about the right size. So I'm going to take my smaller uh, filbert here and uh, start picking up some of this uh, these dark colors. I've got some Van Dyke brown, I've got some midnight black, uh, a little bit of uh, dark sienna. So if you can see those colors there on my palette, um, you can see that they're um, giving me some interesting colors for um, trees. So we, I'm going to put one big old tree trunk right in here, except it's got to be darker. Putting that to the top. And um, this photograph, again, like some of my others, had no real um, sun shining in it exactly. It was hard to tell where the sun was. Um, if there was any sun, um, and if so, where it was coming from. So that stuff we have to make up. Uh, this is sort of a wide tree here. Maybe one of the, one of the bigger ones. Um, over here I've got a smaller one. I could use the uh, painting knife for this if I wanted, but uh, I'm going to just uh, keep using these filberts as long as they feel good to me. Um, So 
So that was just uh, almost all midnight black. Um, a few more things that look like some trees, tree trunks back in there. Um, this one here, I'm going to see if I can. Uh, I keep getting too light. Um, these trees are closer in, so they have to be darker. Something like that. Probably going to use a smaller brush to put uh, some of the other branches on these trees. But compared to the photograph, you see I've really simplified this scene quite a bit by taking out all that crazy brush and uh, branches that were floating around in there. And I've created something really quite different than what the original was. So that is a challenge for you today to uh, see if you can do something similar. Let me get a little bit smaller. I'm going to flat brush now. This is a uh, number four uh, flat. And uh, it's got a little bit narrower uh, bristles on it so I can sort of finish off some of these trees, putting in a few Um, trunks or more uh, I'm going to put some shadow on the left side of this tree to make it look like it's uh, got a little sun coming from the right. I'm going to pretend that's where the sun's coming from. Uh, and uh, hopefully that will another little small tree right in here. Um, using midnight black, using some white, using my dark uh, Van Dyke brown. Hmm. These are even smaller over here. I'm going to wait on those until I put some more of that background in. But uh, right now that's uh, enough for those trees. Um, I need to uh, fill in around them. I or put some put some tree, some uh, leaves and stuff on top of those. Claire, Claire Shipman, hello. Can I sell your paintings with my permission? Yes, you may. None of this is. Once I put it out here on uh, YouTube, it's uh, not considered copyright protected by me. You can use the images, uh, use my paintings. Uh, if you can sell them, one, more power to you. Wonderful. Uh, give it a try and uh, let me know how you do. It'd be interesting to see how some people that have tried some of my paintings, if they're uh, successful in selling them, that would be wonderful. And I don't expect any royalties or anything like that. I just sort of enjoy helping you learn how to paint and uh, hopefully I'm able to do that with this thing go there it is right there okay so I'm just running these things off the top and uh, now I want to come back and get myself a little bit bigger filbert here my number 10 I'm going to start uh, putting in some uh, bright leaves and brightly colored leaves with have some greens, yellows, and uh, that sort of stuff on them, and they're all going to be up here like this. Uh, we're going to cover some of these trunks with leaves and uh, let them sort of play out into the top of the painting up here. Uh, brightly colored. So the, the bright green, the yellow mixed with cad yellow and sap green give me a very bright uh, green color. It looks like a spring color. 
that would be showing up here. Um, these trees, and so I'm sort of making it so that there's um, something very soft and wispy. You can take the, the brush like, like I'm showing you here and just by touching it in a sort of a dry brush manner make something that's very very light and airy and it looks like um, leaves that are falling out, not falling, but are, are uh, they're sort of sticking out over this uh, tree. There's some maybe back in here. Uh, Julia, Julia Robert, hello from Azerbaijan. Wow, welcome, welcome. I don't know where everybody else is from. I've had people from UK, from Spain, from Italy in previous demonstrations. Uh, so. If you want to tell me where you're from, that would be great. This is, my paintings are probably more appropriate for a uh, foreign audience right now than they are American audience because <laughs> it's 1.30 in the afternoon here in the Eastern time and so it's anybody that's working would have trouble watching me. but. Um, sort of a middle of the day type thing so I can kind of keep my uh, mix both the areas of the of the world together here so I can have uh, people from foreign countries if I did them all at night people from foreign countries wouldn't be able to see it if I did it real early in the morning um, probably would have a, an equal amount of difficulty getting people to tune in but uh, I really appreciate everybody that's here and everybody that's tuning in and keeps coming back. So I'm just putting in these nice little fluffy things here. Uh, bright, I put some white in there to brighten that up. Um, you can see that now. And over here I'm going to have some more, just kind of go off the edge of the paper here. Cover up some of these trunks. That's too light. It's almost the same value. You can't even see that there's uh, leaves and stuff there. So I want to darken it down just a bit. A little bit of Prussian blue. Watch what this does. I just touched that Prussian blue and it just, see how dark it makes that? Um, So there's some almost too dark there. Take that out. Um, let's pick up a few more things in here like this. Um, mixture of the colors, one from one side of the brush and another color from the other side of the brush. Dark green from the back side and the bright yellow from the front side. So just Tipping off, I'm trying to get, uh, when you see me doing this, I'm trying to get like three values. I get a medium value, a dark value, and a light value. So I'm adding some of this white to give myself a little bit lighter value here. And if you can do that, you can really highlight and make something look a little more three-dimensional. That's almost too bright. I don't want your eye to go off the canvas looking at these bright whites here. So tune it down a little bit. Okay, so that's looking like a, a bit of a forest there with, uh, I want to cover up these trunk tops so it doesn't look like they're uh, <clears throat> not connected. All right, now, um, <clears throat> in that background area, before I leave it, I'm going to go back and get my little uh, <clears throat> script liner here brush, uh, and I want to put in some really fine I'm using uh, my Liquin with my uh, Van Dyke Brown, getting a real runny consistency here, and I want to start putting in some other 
tree trunks back in here. Something like that. I want some smaller ones. So I've got some good sized ones, some medium sized ones, and I want some, some baby trunks now. They all don't have to be this color. <clears throat> we can actually change that color and lighten them up. As long as I have a darker background, I can put in something that looks a little more white. Here's a. I don't have my background in there yet, so I'm. Uh, but you see the little white, how that comes through when you have a darker background. Here, there's a. Let's put in some. Some of those throughout there and it sort of starts now looking like a lot more trees. Uh, almost too light there. <clears throat> Put it on the wrong side. Go back and darken that down just a little. I want you to see that trunk, but I don't want it to be all white. <clears throat> okay, so, how are we doing? Um, the other thing I can do while I have this small brush in my hand, come back in here and put in just a few things that look like there are some other branches here setting in these trees. Um, I've got most of these trees running off the top, so there's probably not a lot of other branches here, but you might see something sticking out here in a few spots. That's almost too dark. When I look at it, my eye goes right up there. It didn't give me the kind of branch I wanted anyway. That was kind of goofy. Let's see if I can fix that. I don't know. Blot it was my Oh, here I got rid of some of that. Yeah. If I didn't have, probably didn't have enough uh, thinner or uh, liquid on my brush to make it paint flow smoothly. That's why it didn't work. So I can put in a few branches here. Maybe helps a little bit. <clears throat> Too much there. Let's get this. Okay, I keep doing that, I'll mess it up worse. I'm going to just kind of blot some of that out. I can keep watching behind me. I have a monitor behind me. Oh, Jacqueline, hello, thank you. Somebody from Croatia, UK, Cork, Ireland. Wow, great, you guys, glad you're all here. Um, over here, I think I'm going to see if I can pop in another branch or two, maybe. Back there, see how that looks. Um, getting too much detail. I don't want to get a lot of detail back here because this is not the focal point of this painting, but I do want to have some interesting uh, light colored tree trunks back here that maybe look like they might be um, trees that have like a white bark, like a birch tree or something like that. <clears throat> All right, uh, that's enough of that. Let's start working now sort of on this middle ground. Um, start coming forward here. I'm going to start uh, putting in some colors here like my up some yellow ochre and just sort of pull it in here and sort of tie the bottoms of these trees together here with something that looks like they're either it's either more bushes in, a, in this middle ground or it's ground it could be a little bit of either um, um, So these brushes really make it easy to sort of give you this look of 
flatness. Now my brush strokes, I'm trying to make the brush strokes go the way the land goes. The land is going now this way. I'm not trying to paint my trees. I'm not trying to... So I'm just kind of filling it in with some low low bushes and uh, or grass. It could be grasses back here. It's going to be my stream coming here. So I want it to, I want to leave it, leave room for it right there. Um, a little bit of browns, stick in some browns in here. To, maybe some shadows. I said the sun was going to be coming from the right. So some of this might be darker. There might be some uh, shadows in here that sort of follow these trees. Uh, that's what this could be over here. So it's moving pretty quickly here. Uh, and uh, we have a really nice, interesting forest. Um, let's see, over here on the other side, um, there's a lot more growth on this side. It's, it's like it's closer to us over here. So um, I may want to stick in a few more trees. I'm going to paint behind these white trees while I have this, uh, have them in here and uh, show you some more bushes that are sort of surrounding those trees. Um, some browns, get some browns in here. Pokers. I haven't cleaned this brush out. I've sort of just going from paint to paint. Um, so hopefully you're, uh, let me see here, I think maybe. Remove my palette for you so it's not in the area where I'm painting. I have to do that during the live streaming, otherwise I start painting underneath where my palette is showing to you, and I don't want to do that. <clears throat> when I edit these videos after the fact, I always take the time to make sure I give you a good view of the palette. But when I'm doing it live, it's I have to watch it. Okay. So, what have I got over here? I've got a lot of interesting stuff. Easy brush strokes, just sort of pushing up, letting the brush do its thing. Not trying to be too deliberate, kind of letting this brushes kind of tell me what's going on. So I'm just filling in some areas back there that, um, again, these are abstract shapes trying to tell you that there's a lot of brush, but there's also a, a path or a stream that's going back into the woods. Um, the photograph didn't show you that. Let's put some bright yellow on top of that in some areas here, see if I can brighten it up a little bit, put some, uh, like some maybe, we're getting closer now so these things can start looking more like uh, bushes that have some flowers or something on them that like brighten it up. Just maybe a little too bright. Don't want to make it too bright. Um, ochres, yellows. Um, back to the greens. Getting down this area, I'm starting to get some, there are some red, reddish type bushes here that I think were probably uh, something dying in the fall in this photograph and uh, I'm going to put some in there but they're going to be a brighter sort of a more of a, a brighter spring color. I'll show you what I mean. Here's something like this that we're going to put in 
Where's my stream? I don't want to lose my stream. There it is. Okay. So I picked up a little alizarin with some white. <coughs> and I'm going to put in some uh, sort of a reddish color. I can even put a little cad red in there maybe to, to make a little brighter red. Uh, that's really red. Too red, probably. Um, so how do you tone down a red? Okay, look at your color wheel. Hello from Greece. Um, color wheel. What tones down red? What's across from red? It's a green color. So let's take some of our green and mix it. And all of a sudden, my red is getting toned down to a more of a grayish red with some grayish red. You see the difference? Interesting little colors here coming out. Grayish red, put a little more green in there, maybe a little yellow and start pulling in some, uh, some of these brighter colors. I'm just giving myself uh, some rows of stuff here that's sort of growing along this. It could be a, this, if this were a pathway, if you want to make it a pathway, make it a pathway. I'm going to make it uh, some water here in a minute. Um, but you can see there's a stream and there's a, when you look at this, your eye is going to follow this little zigzag path back into the woods. And that was not in the photograph at all. Appreciate you folks from Europe watching. It's 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 p.m. Let's see, no, 20, 30, that's, uh, that's 8 p.m. 8 p.m. your time. So we have some interesting things going on there, just sort of getting to the foreground. Um, I want to have this area, I want some similar types of bushes um, in here. Um, I'm going to just put in some my ochre that's got some yellow in it. Um, another set of bushes. These are really, this is really not real complicated painting folks. Um, it's uh, almost the same brush stroke over and over. Um, the different colors, different values. Um, and as I come forward, I'm going to start making uh, give a little more detail, a little darker colors maybe. Uh, but you can just sort of see how how I'm this whole painting's been almost a pushing up of the brush over and over. Similar things. A little bit of dark down here in some areas. Moving pretty quickly, this is a fairly fast painting so far. Let's see, don't get my stream back in there. I'm gonna leave some room to put some <clears throat> grasses over that area after I put the water in. I don't want to go right up against that yet, otherwise I'll be painting water over my grasses. Pick up a bit of phthalo blue and see if I can get another color of green here. Maybe I can put this a bit of that violet in. I guess a little bit different color here. We are coming closer. We're coming to, to the uh, more of the foreground here. <coughs> darker, come back, get some lighter colors and put over it. Um, so I'm just building landscape here out of uh, brush strokes that I'm just pushing up. I 
Now I've got this red over here. I don't want to leave it over there all by itself. <clears throat> so I'm going to have put some over here in a minute. Um, But before that, I want to get a lot of this filled in. So these old strokes like this with the brush will help give me grasses. You can see, you probably can't see that. It's too far away or it's not coming through on the camera but uh, that gives you a very nice stroke. The other the other technique that you could use would be take a, a fan brush and do the same kind of thing. You can you can put it in there and put a color in it of some kind and uh, when you pull it up you get these interesting little shapes that look like grasses. Um, that's a trick that Bob Ross used forever. I don't know if you remember him but uh, he used to use the fan brush to get all these kinds of special strokes of <clears throat> something like that. And so it's, uh, you can do it either way. Uh, I've been so used to using these uh, filbert brushes. This has a, a um, type of, I think it's called synthetic mongoose is what the filberts, fil uh, what the filament is in this brush what the bristles are. Uh, and it's got such a nice soft texture that I really just kind of get used to using it. And I really kind of like it. Um, there's some, I think I'm going to copy some of these lighter areas. There's some <clears throat> light areas that's almost, almost white, whited out here a little bit um, in this foreground. So I'll put that down and uh, cover the corner of my painting with it over here. Picking up titanium white and just sticking in there and I can come back and put in some I don't want to leave that just as one big color like that. I'm going to want to uh, change it and uh, add some more objects in there. Whether it's either rocks, maybe I'll put in some rocks or uh, put in some uh, more bushes. I've got plenty of bushes in this thing. Uh, we don't need more bushes. Well, I think this is looking more spring-like than the original photo. Um, Certainly, <clears throat> is a brighter because of the yellows and the bright colors I'm using here. It definitely doesn't say fall necessarily because I'm putting in a lot of these bright greens, um, and um, that color of green is sort of a lime green, if you will, um, tends to say spring more than a darker green would. Okay. So I'm just making layer after layer after layer of bushes and uh, that sort of thing. Um, what I do with my... I want to get out. I got my brush too full here. Let me get another brush. Um, pick up some of this red again that I used on the other side <clears throat> over here. I want to start putting a little bit of that in over here because I want those flower-like uh, things to sort of repeat over here. Don't want them to be identical, but I want to see the same type of coloring over here. 
that adds harmony and balance to the painting. And you would probably see that in nature if you were out there uh, <clears throat> walking in this area. Um, see if I can get a little bit of uh, some more bushes underneath. Uh, how about, I'm going to leave room for a rock or something in there, I think. A rock or two. Can't hurt. <clears throat> okay, now. So, just because I have this color change from warm to a little bit darker to a little bit bluer to a little bit more purple, um, that shows a lot of depth in this painting. It looks like you could either walk on this path or, or uh, take that creek and follow it back, way back into the woods, and, uh, and it would take you somewhere. The photograph I started with didn't have any of that in it, um, so I've, using some of the colors and some of the shapes from the original photograph, I have sort of created an entirely different look here by this. Um, I want to put in this, start putting in this creek. You already see the creek. It's in gray because that's my underpainting. Grand, hello from Grand Canera, Canaria. Wow, where is that? Is that in, in Spain or I don't know where that is. Okay, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of this, some of the sky color I've got that's got some, a little bit of blue in it, a little bit of the uh, violet in it. <clears throat> And we're going to start back in here and sort of put in this a little bit lighter actually than the, the gray. So my tone, so from my uh, value map, it's lighter than what's under it. <clears throat> and it always, water always reflects what's in it, around it, or above it. So. Most people paint water, they say, well, if the sky is blue, the water's blue. Uh, but that's not always the case when you're back in the woods or wherever you are. It may not necessarily be reflecting the sky. I've kind of painted it similar to the sky here so far, but I'm not done. So I'll put a little more of my Thalo blue in here. So I'm getting some darker colors. Um, gray. Gray with a little blue in it, maybe. Actually, if you ever paint these kind of streams in the winter time, Many times, they actually, in the photograph, they come across as almost black. So I'm going to pick up a little of my brownish color here and sort of add in some color that might be reflecting down from the uh, woods around it here. So I'm going to tone that down a little bit. I don't want it to be that bright, that blue, um, because it's not really reflecting as much sky back here as I'm showing you. Um, it may even be reflecting some of the green in the water, or green around it. If it's not moving much, it's probably uh, picking up some of that green that's in around it. 
but I had that blue, so that blue and violet underpainting here. So I could just sort of hit and miss. I want to pull it forward a little bit, maybe even more. It could be coming from who knows where. It could be going who knows where. We're just sort of letting it sort of fade out into the grasses here. And I'm feathering it back into what's there. I still see way too much blue in here. Um, and I need to tone that down a little bit. <clears throat> I even can Put in a few things that look like some of these trees are reflecting in there. Since it's all of a sudden, it looks more like water even now, doesn't it? So by just uh, putting in a few vertical streaks in here, I'm showing you that water is sort of calm. It's probably not dark enough for you to see it. I don't know. It's high, uh, down here somewhere. Okay. Um, just a little bit. I want to put a little bit of a bank around this wood back here. How long, how's our time? Oh, we've been going only a minute here, or not a minute, an hour we've been going uh, with the painting. Um, let's see, let me get some dark here. Back in here I want to show just a little bit of a bank. Uh, show you that's a, it looks more like a stream of sort if you put a, a bit of a bank around it. It, don't, it doesn't have to be completely filled in, but it certainly helps tell the story of what you're, what's going on there. Now, um, even under here, I probably got a little bit of bank, maybe. Uh, some of these bushes are, are growing out over, over the bank, so I'm just going to kind of run it together and tell you a little story there. Okay, now. That looks pretty good to me. Now let's get me a flat brush and let's see if I can put in maybe a, a rock or two back here that's sort of laying in the weeds. Be darker. Put some stuff around those. Um, in a stream like this, you might find rocks laying beside it, or near it, or in it even. Uh, we could have a couple of rocks laying in this area that's like that. That helps helps lead the eye. What I'm doing is trying to lead the eye back into this painting. Um, so if if you're looking at this, hopefully your eye is following this little path and then wandering off into Never Never Land back here. You don't know where you're going back there, um, but it certainly helps you get back into the painting. Um, a lighter color here. I'm going to put in a bit of a highlight on these rocks so that it looks like there's they're a little more three-dimensional. Um, usually pick up some colors like this that help tell the story. Um, how are we doing here? This, okay, um, that area right here, I didn't finish that off with some bright greenery coming out over this water. 
and a little bit of that green in here. I got a big blob of yellow uh, ochre there that's doesn't have any abstract shapes in it. Um, what else? Um, I could make that this area here. I could make it even a little darker and sort of make it look like it's a thick bank right there. See how that changed that? Just putting a little shadow right there. All of a sudden made it look like it's a little thicker. I even did the same thing here a little bit. Um, but it's uh, getting smoother. It's getting more filled out here. Um, so let's just kind of keep that going like that. Okay. Um, maybe there's a few um, little uh, tree-like things here. This Take this knife sometimes and you can scrape the paint out and uh, if you're in an area you can make it look like there's uh, little small, I don't even know if you can see that. Let me look over here. things that just sort of carve out some more strokes of uh, things in the painting that look like small small trees um, and let's see if I got a little bit of really fine paint on this brush plenty of thinner in it So I'm putting in a couple of trees here that just some little calligraphy that helps maybe define some of this a little more. Things like that. I'm just using a brush that's got a lot of, a whole lot of thinner in it. And uh, I just see an area here that's not finished off very well. This area over here on the right is all sort of all one color. Sort of violates my rule of not having a big section of the painting that's all one color with nothing going on. So let's put a few things in there. Make some things going on here. Put a few of these little bright Maybe over here under this rock we got some stuff going on. I don't know. Over here I didn't finish filling in around these rocks either. Let's put a few light flicks of bright yellows, cad yellow. Um, things are happening all over this place here. Okay, so I've got a lot of a lot of wood stuff here. I've got some nice balance in my colors. I've got the color the pinks over here and back there. Um, thinking, let me stop and step back here and take a look from a distance. Definitely has some depth. Definitely looks different than what I started with. Um, I see I could use probably some of this bright yellow. Pick up some of this bright yellow, yellow green. Maybe in this area over here there's a few more things that look like there's some I want to pull some bright colors out of here to help you get back into this painting and see some Like that, put a couple over here to sort of echo that color so we don't end up with one color out there. So you see some, it, I think it adds a little more life to it maybe. It may have a little too much, too bright, but um, 
certainly helps you see the life that's going on in this woods and that's really what I was trying to do trying to brighten it up trying to keep it from being too dull and gray and boring <clears throat> and let's see maybe just a few touches of some texture maybe on these trees I kind of left them uh, alone after I painted them. I see some canvas coming through there. I want to sort of what I'm doing is working over here putting in a few finishing touches to darken up some areas here to help identify the maybe the sun Just adding a little texture, a little bit of uh, things that help define these a little better. Dark, I'm using my dark. Something like that. It doesn't have to be um, so obvious it hits you over the head, but I want to try to make it look like there's some roundedness again <clears throat> it's the same idea that if you get three values in a shape whether that's a, a tree or a, a building or a bush or a cloud you can find a way to get three values in there you will give it some roundedness <clears throat> so all I've done is just sort of highlighted these this one side of these trees to give it some uh, give it the appearance that it's got some roundedness going on and uh, don't need much more than that this one over here I uh, have to almost step in front of the camera to see this over here because I have a new bright light on the right side of my easel here that I uh, it kind of gives me a glare okay folks I'm thinking <coughs> I could spend some more time on this, I suppose, if I wanted to uh, mess around with these rocks and add some more details, but uh, I think you get the idea. I think it's something you can maybe try for yourself. Be glad for you to try it. Don't worry about copyright restrictions or anything like that. Use my sketches. Um, by the way, I will have this. I will re-edit this video. What you're seeing is a live streaming version, but I'll edit it and uh, have it on my website uh, along with the sketch. And uh, you'll be able to see that, pick up the sketch. And uh, because I basically didn't follow the photograph hardly at all, other than to get some basic shapes, pulled out some trees, um, and uh, cut it down in size from where it was the sky I'm saying and so by putting that this bluish area back here and this violet area there uh, bringing it forward it basically gives you a lot of depth in this painting that wasn't there to start with um, and uh, so that's how you can simplify a painting a, a photograph that was so uh, so uh, full of everything. I don't know if you can see that well, but that's how busy it was and there was really no depth, uh, no place to lead the eye in. It would just sort of cut you off right here and you're just sort of blocked with a big rock block of trees. So we turned that into something that had some depth, had some uh, interest in it, pulled the trees out of this all this brush and uh, was able to show you that. So I've signed it and uh, I may touch it up a little more after the after we sign off here but I don't really have to um, so I'm going to uh, zoom back and say uh, thank you once again for watching thanks for tuning in and uh, really appreciate all the folks that uh, follow me on YouTube and uh, tune into these live broadcasts I hope you like them hope you give these paintings a try and uh, let me know how you do leave me some comments and uh, be glad to uh, have some more conversations with you and uh, 
Check out my Facebook page, check out my website. You will find the sketch on my website once I put the new video, edited video up. And uh, you'll be able to uh, use that as your guide for painting this particular painting. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please do. Uh, tell your friends and have them subscribe. And uh, I do these paintings every, uh, every month. I do an oil painting on the third Wednesday of every month. And I do a watercolor on the fourth Wednesday of the month. So uh, next week I will be doing a watercolor uh, live broadcast. So if you like watercolors, tune into that one as well. Um, I think that's all I want to say for now. So until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.